Hello and welcome to D2C Podcast. I'm Eric Dick. Today we're diving into the enchanting waters of Mas Amigos, America's favorite new class pet. Join us as Jared Olivia, the mind behind this beloved brand, shares the ups and downs of bringing these moss ball companions into the spotlight. This episode is rich with insights for those navigating the challenging yet rewarding waters of modern marketing in 2023. Listen in to discover the unexpected challenges and twists tied to TikTok's ever-evolving algorithm and why authentic resonance is more crucial than ever, how adding a hat to a moss ball not only personified these companions, but sparked an exciting new product line for Moss Amigos, the ingenious use of precious minerals that opened up fresh avenues and market opportunities for the brand, as well as the most intriguing queries about these companions. Do they float or don't they? Are they boys or girls? We don't know, so stay tuned tuned for an engaging exploration into the world of Mas Amigos and pick up some valuable marketing wisdom along the way. On with the show. This year, we were slow. I was like, okay, we need to do something else. I saw this chain on Twitter that was like, oh, I'm in this hotshot TikTok agency and we have these numbers. One of their clients was Sephora, which also sells to our demo. It was 10,000 for UGC content for one month and we're gonna see how it goes. We worked really hard on these scripts and they found these influencers for us. And I don't know if TikTok's algorithm changed and this UGC thing just was not working anymore. But by June, 2023, it was not working for us. All of the 30 videos flopped. Some of these UGC influencers, they are burnt out. They're just like, hi, yeah, this is my thing. It's so great, buy it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not paying for that. Like, I'm sorry, go take a nap and like circle back with me next week and give me another video, please. Creative minds, math-obsessed media buyers. To ship more winning ads, you need both worlds working together. Introducing Thumbstop, the weekly newsletter by Motion that covers the art and the science of creating winning meta, TikTok, and YouTube ads. Every Sunday, you'll learn about the science. Think about CAC and contribution margin spreadsheet tutorials, advanced ad analysis techniques, and interviews with elite media buyers. You'll build your analytical skills every week. The art. Creative cheat codes, winning TikTok ad formats, interviews with creative directors. You'll get practical ideas to ship winning ads faster and new ways to fix the brand performance divide. Subscribe at motionapp.com forward slash thumbstop. Jared, welcome to the D2C podcast. I got to say, Mas Amigos is one of the most uh, interesting, amusing products I've seen in a long time. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks, Eric, uh, for having me here. So start at the beginning. Why, uh, why did you build Moss Amigos? So Moss Amigos came into fruition in a plant room, actually. So I was hanging out with my fiance there, and we were talking about, this was in 2018, we were kind of talking about how plants have become so popular with millennials at the time, but so many of them were killing their plants. And so I had lived in Japan for two years before I met him. And there was a plant called uh, Marimo there. Um, and it was basically uh, a moss ball in a jar. And I told that to him and he couldn't pronounce the name. He was like, what? Like, how would I say that? What is it in English? And I was like, oh, it's like moss ball in English. He's like, moss ball. And I was like, and we were thinking, okay, we live in California. What would we call it? And then that's how Moss Amigo was born. Uh, we would use a different macroalgae now, so we don't use um, Marimo macroalgae, but we use a different one now. But that's, that's how the initial idea came up with. And we thought of it as a pet plant uh, that's kind of like joy in a jar. It's really hard to kill, and it's for people who are new to plants and don't have a green thumb but want to try. And they're suspended in water. That's right. So you don't have to water them. You don't have to water yeah. that. That is a major meme with millennials and myself. Actually, I just I just watered my monstera, and uh, I'm like hydrating like crazy every day. And my monstera <laughs> is just in the corner, just watching me. Just like, what are you doing to me? Uh, so Moss Amigos would solve that. And Moss Amigos is also like really kind of uniquely personified, which is a really. It's sort of like you, you have the the whole accessory kits for it, which I think are really cool. That's right. So yeah, Moss Amigos. I feel like the company actually really blew up once we put hats on the Moss Amigos because this type of macroalgae and a lot of macroalgae is actually sensitive to direct sunlight because they're used to growing deeper underwater. Uh, so they are photosensitive plants, which is interesting. Uh, so the, the, the hat actually serves a little bit of a utility there uh, by reducing the direct sunlight that hits the, the plant itself. 
another way that I'm like Moss Amigos. I need to, I need to wear a hat. <laughs> I'm sensitive to the sun. Yes. Uh, very cool. And that, and so how, how, how far along in the development of Moss Amigos did the accessories come? It came about, I think it came about 12 to 18 months after our initial, um, after our initial try. So we started our company out as a hobby. Uh, we both worked tech jobs as our uh, first nine to five. And uh, we would go to flea markets. And that's kind of where we got started. Um, but then it wasn't until the beginning of the pandemic or mid pandemic, where, you know, I had so much free time all of a sudden to devote to Mas Amigos that I was just experimenting. And I just thought, I was like, yeah, what if I, you know, we, we, we were thinking about giving them like buddies in their jar, but then I was like, oh, but what about putting something on them? And, you know, we found these hats and we, I put them on and I walked over, there's a horse ranch randomly by my house. <laughs> so nice. I walked to the horse ranch with the, with my, uh, with the moss ball and a cowboy hat propped it up on there and it went viral on Instagram um, and people just loved it. Um, and that was our first huge win. And that's actually, I think what kind of propelled this company to be more mature as it is today. Uh, that, that post and then me trying to learn uh, Instagram and meta marketing more broadly, I just kept, I boosted that post and I was boosting it profitably and that kind of built our initial follower base. And that hook, just that, that initial thing of like, put a hat on it is going to help in, in any of your ads as well, right? Going from just a, just an, an initial, it's, it, it's an interesting concept on its own, um, to yes. import from Japan. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, and but yeah. then to like personify it in the way and that probably frees you up in your marketing to be more creative and whimsical and fun as well. Right. Oh, that's right. Yes. I think actually, so once we produced the hat, people were asking for different colors of hats, different styles of hats. And then beyond hats, a lot of the feedback we were getting was, I want more accessories for my Mas Amigo, like, please. And so we are building out with our product roadmap, uh, seasonal accessories. So actually we are launching, we've launched beanies now. So your Mas Amigo can also wear a beanie and we have beanies in 28 colors, uh, uh, for whatever your Mas Amigos personality is. And then they also have uh, coffee cups. So if your Mas Amigo is wearing like maybe a Dijon beanie and they enjoy pumpkin spice latte, uh, you can set them up quite nicely in a rose quartz jar. Oh my God. You definitely need pumpkin spice. And then you're going to need pepper. You're going to need like candy cane lattes as well, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> This whole world, and I, and you probably need to introduce the concept that like Moss Amigos do well with like other Amigos. So you need to ha you need to have like a whole family of Moss Amigos on your shelf. I guess I think right. That's right. We have an ad going out that says uh, "Adopt a Moss Family Today," and it is a family of Moss Amigos of uh, the, the different sizes. So after we created the Amigo we learned how to manipulate the macroalgae. So we have a provisional patent and we can control the sizes of them uh, and their shape as well. And so we have the, uh, the Amigo, that's our first size. It's about one inch in diameter. Then we have the Chico, which is about half an inch. And then the Rico, which is a quarter inch. And then the Nino, which is about a centimeter. Um, oh so yeah, so the Mas Chico, Mas Rico, Mas Nino, are kind of like the you know baby child adolescent version of the Mas Amigo, which is the adult version, and 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 they do grow over time. So we do have uh, Mas Care plans for Mas parents to purchase, um, so that they can make sure that their Mas pets are uh, you know well taken care of, even if there is an accident. How big could you get one of these things? Could you, could you grow if you had a big enough vat? Could you grow it to like a huge size? You could. I think in nature, the biggest ones have been like volleyball sizes Interesting. Um, around that. Uh, but that, yeah, we, we could probably grow up. We could do it bigger the way we do it. Uh, once the patent is finalized, you know, we could probably experiment with retail locations and have like, you know, a Moss Jumbo or Moss Royale, whatever you want to call it. And it could be kind of like a flagship Moss that lives in this store, you know. E even just for even just for social media, just like have the dad, like you know the one is like make it seem like it's the one that they all come from or something. Like yes. the, I mean they do all come they from do. one. They all do come from one. We 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 nickname it in R and D uh, the mother moss. Uh, she yeah. lives in a photo bioreactor and she's 
She's just chilling. <laughs> Learning so much about this today. Like, take me back to the flea market for a minute there. Like, yes. what was it like? Like, I guess people just see this thing and they're they're generally delighted by it. Like, what was it like selling it in those early days? Did you know you sort of had a hit from that from that those reactions? Yeah, I would say I would say ninety percent of the reactions were. Everyone was curious, and 90% of them were positively curious. They're like, whoa, what is this? What is that? Or like someone older would come up and be like, oh, wow, I love younger generations. They're just making stuff. And I was like, oh, thank you, old man. That was very nice of you to say. Um, <laughs> um, or like sense. teachers, yeah, and teachers would come up, and they'd be like, oh, this would be a great uh, – a pet plant or a class pet. And I was like, okay. And those were some initial ideas that were sewed into my brain. But I would say younger women were our main audience. They would come up and they would just love it. They'd be like, oh my God, this is so cute. And they would love the gemstones as well. Um, and, you know, I love gemstones. I think they're pretty. I did not uh, fix so much value on like the metaphysical properties of the gemstones going mm. initially. But, you know, other audiences, they do associate the gemstones with these metaphysical properties. And I think if that piece of the product speaks to you, then totally that's awesome. You know, and so they would love the different like gemstones. Um, so that's what the flea market kind of showed us. And then I did get like, you know, we get some negative comments. Like people would be like, oh, you're just selling rocks and moss. I could get that in the river. <laughs> and then like walk away. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You can do that. Go do that. You know? And then, um, or there'd be like, I had this one girl and I kind of remember her. Um, and I kind of laugh now because, you know, we're actually doing really good. She was just like, hmm, is this your little Shark Tank product? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Maybe it will be one day. Who knows? And she's like, mm, I don't think so. And I was like, whoa, like, you're so mean for 16. Like, what are you doing, girl? Uh, you know, and we're in Silicon Valley. So it's like, you know, a lot of like people, you know, it's so funny having a D2C company in Silicon Valley. I do feel condescended to a lot by SaaS companies. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. even if my company is profitable, like, just because, like, I don't have, like, a fake 10, like, $100 billion TAM, I just feel like, um, but what is it's only worth like a few million <laughs> and I'm like okay that's like whatever <laughs> like that's a very good impression do, do you have a Patagonia <laughs> vest do you have a Patagonia vest I have no I you know what so <laughs> I'm just gonna comment here I don't know if this will make it on the pod let's but, do it oh it will okay so I'm not a transplant I'm from the Bay Area and I have a Santa Cruz pullover hoodie like that is what like people from the Bay Area wear yeah. Transplants are the, like, they're the athleisure people who came from everywhere around the world and around the country, which is totally fine. And I love that they're building up Silicon Valley, but like, they're the ones wearing the Patagonia vest. And, you know, when I think when people move to places, like people move to New York, people move to Silicon Valley, people move to LA, you know, there's an adjustment period and you kind of have like fat head syndrome. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sometimes you kind of, you know, the tech bro uh, stereotype is not unearned because there's some dysfunctional behavior that arises when you go to a new place and you just decide this is your personality for a bit. I love it. I, we need more hot takes on this, <laughs> on this podcast and a yeah. D to C, a D to C aficionado living amongst the, uh, the venture, the VCs out, out there in Silicon Valley. That's, that's a great perspective. Um, <laughs> so what, uh, so it, my mind goes to, and I, I, I'm not a boomer. I'm not. I'm not quite a boomer. But I. Yeah. But my mind goes to the, the pet rock, and to me, this yeah. is like such an interesting fusing of the pet rock, which is like a total joke. Like it's a total. It's literally. I could go to the river. It's on a bed of straw, and then it's like combines it with like sea monkeys, which was. I think I told you in the pre-interview. My mom told me she wouldn't buy because she felt like I was playing God by bringing like <laughs> by creating life. Uh, and, and, but it combines that to this, like, and it's like, it's novel, it's interesting. And it make it's like, uh, it's, it's a good set piece. It's a, it's, it's a good decor. It fits in decor much better than, than either of those two things would. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I, when I originally conceived Moss Vegas and I was doing the business plan, I took, you know, those like basic business classes in undergrad and it's like, make your business plan and like what your product is. And in my original slides, I had the rock pet and I did my research on the rock pet. And then I also did chia pets. That was my other, my other yeah. case study there. Uh, they both obviously were kind of blip novel. Well, I think chia pets actually, I, I, I would give them a break. I think they're a little bit better, but rock sure. pet definitely was like a blip novelty. It was like a funny joke and it like raged. And then they sold, I think 5 million, which at the time 
that the rock that came out was a huge amount of money. Um, and, and society had their good laugh and, you know, we kind of moved on. And then I think Chia Pet came on the scene, which, huh, maybe I wonder if Chia Pet, you know, the guy who founded Chia Pet, he recently passed away, but I wish I could have asked him, were you inspired by Rock Pet? Um, because I was inspired by him. It's kind of like this baton pass of, <laughs> of inspiration in the United States, I guess. Um, but so the Chia Pet guy, he came on the scene in the 80s, 90s, you know, with the commercials and, you yeah. know, you call the number, you get the Chia Pet. And that was the main distribution channel back then. I think Rock Pet was maybe more catalogs. Um, so Rock Pet was in the catalogs. Chia Pet was on our cable TV. And they had the jingle, cha 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 chia um, oh. And then... And the Chia Pet guy, he is actually based in San Francisco for the majority of his career. And San Francisco is actually home to a lot of not tech companies uh, like Gap, Levi's Jeans. I think Folgers actually started in San Francisco. And we have Ghirardelli Chocolates. Um, <clears throat> so we had non tech companies before you know, the tech What about San Francisco, the store? Is that from San Francisco? <laughs> San you don't want to you, you don't wanna claim that. <laughs> San Francisco, the store? I don't know what that one is. <laughs> I haven't seen you it don't yet. Know, oh, oh, it's like it's, it's, San Francisco, it's like a really cheap, it's like a bad store. It's like a store that's oh, like, yeah. I think this might be a Canadian store and it just sells like it just sells really bad touristy stuff and it's called San Francisco. So oh, no, you should probably, probably I, I'm gonna go get check that, that one out. taken down. Yeah. yeah, I'd be like, oh, the city will probably. The city's crazy about their IP. My pet rock uh, sold. He he made more than five million from selling it, and he walked away apparently with fifteen million. So you could do worse. Oh. He, he apparently somehow sold the IP for fifteen million. So uh, that's pretty insane to think about. I bet Chia Pet did a lot better. Like I, those those infomercials just stuck in my head. Let's let's talk distribution though. For you, you, you mentioned yeah. uh, that infomercial was the biggest channel for them. What what are your biggest distribution channels? What's working best? Yeah, so I think for us now, Meta, 100%, still the best player in the game in terms of clear return on ad spend. I have just, the way they built their pixel out, it's so much more clearer than Pinterest or X, Twitter, um, and TikTok even. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's just where our main distribution channel is right now. We're seeing a good mix of uh, Facebook. Facebook is pretty good. I think the buyers on Facebook are better. I think Instagram, the buyers are more expensive to capture mm. there, uh, just because I think the audience is a little bit more savvy on Instagram. Um, so that's that's our main distribution. And then obviously user generated content, especially in the form of short form video, is really awesome. But it's not as reliable as our as as our classic you know classically running ads on Meta. And then what kind of ang- – are you going for novelty in the ads? Are you just – are you going to sort of just stop the thumb with something people haven't seen? That's fun? Yeah. So kind of how – yeah, I think novelty for sure is one is one aspect. So we do have one ad of the Masamigo in a hat, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a showstopper. It disrupts people. They're like, oh, what is what is that? And then, you know, we have really good comments on the ads. Uh, I tried to – you know, curate them. So there's like productive comments on the ads. Like some of them are just like, this is disgusting. Why would I want this? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> that doesn't need to be on my ad. Um, so I think that's important. If you're a marketer and you're a D2C marketer, you should definitely be moderating your ads. That's in your control, in your purview. It's what a savvy marketer does. You should do that. Um, <clears throat> Especially when you have a showstopper, right? Especially yeah, when exactly. you have this one winner that's that you, and, and yeah, it behooves you to like, when you can turn, turn people in your comments, it, you know, when you can't, yeah, get rid of them. But when you can mm-hmm. have those discussions on, on your, you know, it, it can be super beneficial to the longevity and success of the ad. Yeah, we definitely do that. So I think for some ads, they question like, does it come with a hat? And I'm like, yes, it comes with a summer bundle um, with the hat and they can buy it in a package. So I think I think that's also good as well, um, definitely. And you can kind of engage the community there. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, so we have a, we have a, ad with the moss ball and a hat. And I think that's just like a strong hook. We also have the gemstones. It's not as strong as a hook. I would say it's like, half as strong i don't know <laughs> the, the, the engagement numbers are about half but <clears throat> just the gemstones themselves i think we're not exposed to uh shiny objects you know i think a lot of the ads that are running right now they're following a trend they're following i think they're a lot of them are kind of late to trends sometimes especially the ones on meta um from what i've seen and so they're usually like videos or they're too polished. They're like two polished studio videos that like it comes off as a little bit sterile, I think, to audiences. Um, so I think just, you know, have something fun with a hook or, you know, for uh, or like have something kind of natural looking like the gemstones that are pretty. Like we have this one 
uh, that just we have this one on advantage plus as a picture of Aventurine, uh Moss Chico, and it's just going gangbusters. Like uh, we run it to several audiences, and they just they love it. They're just like, oh wow, yes, gemstone shiny, yes, you know. And I think that's fun, and I love that you know I could serve up something that they would be interested in. Very cool. You mentioned teachers too. That's something I that, that my mind goes to. I, I, you were saying that some a lot of a lot of uh, teachers can't have live animals in the class anymore. So this becomes a great class pet. It, are you actively because it's? I think back to a couple of our our clients who found like for instance that nurses are a huge part of their audience. So they actually uh, have advertising campaigns that are more targeted towards nurses. Are you are you doing any campaigns targeted towards teachers? So we did, we do in the summer uh, when the teachers are kind of preparing to go back to school. So we had, this was a really great story. So we had this teacher in Georgia, I believe. And it was, uh, in Georgia, luckily the kids, or the kids uh, were back in school for the most part, but it was still kind of like, you know, it's pandemic. We all have to wear masks at school. It's not fun. And to motivate his class, they, he bought a Mas Amigo and he named the Mas Amigo Donnie. And so... Donnie, like if you earned enough points, Donnie would write you, would, would reward you somehow. And so the kids all love their Masamigo Donnie. Um, and then that was going on. And then after the school year was over, the teacher had reached out to us and he said, oh my God, thank you for this Masamigo. It really helped me get through the school year. The kids love Donnie, blah, blah, blah. Like, <clears throat> is there a way we could like, like work together? I would love to just like promote you guys, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, like, um, you know, if you feel comfortable, like, we can send, I sent over release forms, you know, for the Guardians, and if you guys want to do a little, like, thank you video, you can. And so, we have this class of, like, elementary school kids in Georgia, and they're like, thank you, Mas Amigos, and they have, like, Donnie, and then I gave them all uh, Mas Ninos, which are the baby Mas Amigos, uh, for each oh, of nice. them all to have, so it was just kind of cute. And so, we run that story sometimes. Um, and I need to make it a blog post and I think I do need to make a more intentional effort because a lot of our comments that are coming in are our reviews or this is my class pet, uh, because kids, these school districts are not allowed to have reptiles and, and hamsters due to allergies anymore. So the Mosmigos makes a perfect class pet. And so I'm hoping we can have more Donnies across the classrooms in, in America. I think just overall too, just the personification is r r just creates so much, so many interesting opportunities for content. After our pre-interview, I I I uploaded an image to Mid Journey of one of your <laughs> of, of one of the Mas Amigos and a asked you know Mid Journey to personify it, and I was just playing around with it. And I think there's like there's like potential comic strips. There's like there's a kids show in in Mas Amigos. I you know potentially if they can get out of those jars, they could get into all kinds of adventures. I know. You know who I am like stalking on TikTok is Butch Hartman. He is so bored. Mm. He so he's the creator of Fairly Odd Parents. Oh yeah, yeah, um, I know. Yeah, and he's just like chilling on TikTok, and I feel like he's like waiting for his next project. So I'm hoping maybe next year I want to approach his team or whoever, however I approach him, but and pitch him potentially a Master Amigo show because I, I I agree with you. I, I do see that potential. I think if you look at the evolution, so you had like you had Rock Pet Pet Rock, and then you had Chia Pets. Uh, Chia Pets did something different than Rock Pets and they went into the licensing game. And I think that mm. gave the product longevity and extended its novelty. Um, they, unfortunately, Chia Pets did not get onto social media fast enough. I think they have a holding company now. I think the founder sold half and he gave it to a li this licensing company. Um, <clears throat> but I think licensing is a big thing. I think uh, having a character is a big thing. Uh, in Japan, where some of the, where the idea of Masamigos did originate from, mascots are a billion dollar industry in that country. Hello Kitty herself is probably the ultimate <laughs> mascot, where she's like literally three circles and a few lines, and she sold yeah. billions and billions of dollars of product. I've heard mascots are coming back too. I've heard just general like sort of brand maximalism is making a comeback. And I've heard mascots are are a big part of that. Just just with what brands are willing to do on their Twitter and things like that to persona. I, I think what was it like Wendy and Johnny Arby got married or so, some somebody oh, so, two fast food icons got married <laughs> or something a little while ago. Like okay, are you okay fast food? No, I um, totally agree. Have you seen um, Scrub Daddy TikTok and Duolingo TikTok? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. They're hot. They're hot. That's what people. Yeah, people like the brands personified. 
Yeah. And I think that's a great opportunity. And I think anyone listening, it's an opportunity to like, look at your product and be like, could I put a hat on this? Yeah. Could, I, could I put a hat right, on this and, and, in there. <laughs> and give it a bit more personality? I think, I think it's a really great exercise. You also mentioned that a big part of your distribution is like plant stores yes. as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, uh, in the United States, Americans purchase $2 billion worth of houseplants every year, and we kill 35% of them within the first year. So indoor houseplant market, I think there's a lot of disruption in the low maintenance category, obviously, here. Um, and so that was a big opportunity with the plant store. So we, grew, we blew up on our own social media, and then we got into Fair Wholesale, which is a wholesale platform which you can sell to independent plant stores. And that's kind of how Mosmios got from zero to 500 plant stores. And so nurseries, florists, and plant boutiques really love to sell Mas Amigos uh, because it's a plant and a gemstone. So it turns pretty fast in the stores. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of fun uh, product in the low maintenance section of their plant boutiques or stores. I think with florists, it's interesting. Uh, we've had a couple orders with florists where they'll uh, purchase in advance uh, like a large amount of one type of Mas Nino or Mas Rico for weddings. Uh, and mm. it's a wedding favor versus centerpiece. Class. Yeah, like a table right. centerpiece would be huge. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and then people, you know, take them home and stuff. So, yeah, that's 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 been one avenue, and I, I want to continue growing the independent plant stores. I think one, I think it's just good for the community to have a plant store, to have someone in your community that cares about plants and wants to train others to nurture plants, and to kind of set that up. You know, we don't all need Home Depot garden center dominating and killing all the three plant stores in the neighborhood. I think, yep. I think it's also more sustainable too, because these local shops tend to source from the local growers versus, you know, Home Depot has probably like an industrialized uh, supply chain and their plants are all, you know, sourced and packaged, you know, and, you know, when you do things like this at an industrial scale, there are harmful impacts to the environment. Um, so you know, I think support your local, you, so support your local plant store. It'll help keep your property value up because you have a cute neighborhood, and it might might you know reduce. Uh, it might make the environment more sustainable. You know, that, that'd be my pitch to support your local plant store. Love it, great pitch. <laughs> We're gonna clip that one out for you. Um, you mentioned you had a but you, you mentioned you had an experience in the pre interview. Uh, you were working. Yeah. You're currently doing like almost all your own creative. You're doing your own media buying. You worked with an agency previously that oh, just yeah. didn't. Get it. I'd be interested to, to talk a little bit about that experience, what you took from that. Yeah. So actually, it was this year. Our We were slow. We were so slow. I was like kind of, I wouldn't say desperate, but I was like, okay, we need to do something else because it's just not working right now. And I see our buyers are on TikTok. And so I saw this... <laughs> this chain on Twitter that was like, oh, I'm this hotshot TikTok agency and we have these numbers, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, let me go talk to this agency. You know, I'm talking to this agency and they're really good. One of their clients was Sephora, which was our, you know, which is, which also sells to our demo. And I was like, okay, this sounds great. And it was 10,000 for UGC content uh, for one month. And we're going to see how it goes. And, you know, we paid it and we worked really hard on these scripts and they found these influencers for us and they were coordinating it. And I don't know if TikTok's algorithm changed. I want to give them a little bit of grace. I don't know if TikTok's algorithm changed and this UGC thing just was not working anymore because I, I had seen it work in the past and these like goofy trends that you make on CapCut work in the past. But by June 2023, it was not working, not working for us. Um, all of the 30 videos flopped. And then also the agency, I felt... One piece of feedback, and I gave them this, and, and I give this to all the agencies, please go on the website, please actually have your people who are writing the scripts and coaching these UGC influencers, like, actually understand the product and actually actually understand the utility here. Like, I had, I, I remember I sent back, like, a few videos that were like, this is not how... The, the moss balls are not all in the same jar. Like they're going to eat each other's food. There's only so much micronutrients in the jar. So we don't have them in the same jar, you know, like, I don't know where that came from. Um, it reminds me of that one TikTok meme where it's like, everybody's so creative. <laughs> where it's like, but it's like a disaster, <laughs> like these disaster uh, uh, abominations. Um, yeah. And so that, there were, I got a couple of those and I was like, okay, you need to send them back. And then, you know, it's only, 
you know, you only have so much authenticity in the tank, I feel sometimes. And some of these yeah. UGC influencers, they are burnt out. They're just like, hi, yeah, this is my thing. Um, it's so great. Um, you buy it. You know, and I'm like, okay, I'm not paying for that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you go take a nap and, like, circle back with me next week and, and give me another video, please. That's not going to work. You know, you know <laughs> yeah. have you seen the, the Vice golf ball ads that are all over social media? That no. it's like, I think it's like a Kendrick Lamar song where it's like, it basically just has the golf ball and then they're all in different colors and the camera stays perfectly fixed on the golf ball but the background all changes like take off oh. the wi-fi to, you know like what with that song i could really yeah. see an ad for you where you've got the moss amigo and then you've got all this like different background stuff happening to it and it just stays and it's like to the beat of the song that's some some free creative consulting there i think i think that one thank could be you really good. oh my gosh oh my gosh the the, the pilot house team's not gonna like that one <laughs> yeah no of course <laughs> yeah no um, no you know, yeah, but I, I do want to work with them. Yeah. 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 I think, I, I don't know. I think, I think that there could be a good fit just, just for how fun the product is. And it, honestly, the thing that I, I actually just watched this TikTok video yesterday on everything, everywhere, all at once. I just, just seen it recently. I need to see but, that movie. Everyone keeps saying like, yeah. The, the, the culminating scene actually, cause it's like, I, I won't spoil anything, but they, they, they do yeah. all the, they go through different dimensions and everything. And they end up as these two rocks on a, on a cliff and they end up having this conversation and actually the climax of the movie happens when the two main characters are these rocks on a cliff. They're just personified rocks. And, and, and at, again, this isn't really a spoiler cause there's so much going on, but at one point the the hero decides to like put on googly eyes. Basically that's, that's like the calm, the climax of the movie in some way is it's like you face reality, like with whimsy in a, in wow. a way. Right. And you yeah. find joy and that you, and you find c- connection and communication. It's sort of like the, w- one of the main points of the movie about how to do this in this like super chaotic world. And I feel like your product does that. I feel like, I think you should definitely watch the movie because that scene will make you think of Mas Amigos, I think. Okay. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I yep. love it. Yeah. Um, here's a question. If we were to give you $50,000 for your marketing, I, t- I think I know where the answer is, but what would you do, uh, like to, to see the most growth with Mas Amigos in the next little while? 50,000 in marketing. Uh, one, I would send 10,000 of that on a mascot suit. Um, that's how much they cost apparently for a custom, a good custom yep. mascot suit. So that's number one. And then the other 40,000, I really, we would just blow up and be totally cemented. If we got like a really hot, not even a lister, an S tier celebrity to S tier, what's S tier? I don't even know that tier. An S tier celebrity right now is someone who's just like red hot, has like a crazy oh, passionate okay, fan okay. base. Like Taylor Swift, it, I would consider like an S tier celebrity. Um, a Kardashian, well, actually, no, not even all the Kardashian sisters. Maybe like only Kim or Kylie yeah. <laughs> would be like an S tier celebrity. And then um, what I, who I would really love, you know, I don't know, forty thousand dollars probably isn't even enough, but like I would love Olivia Rodrigo to somehow promote a Mas Amigo. Um, that would just knock it out of the park. We'd be done. We'd be like done with marketing for like two years. Um, we would just, I would just run on that. Um, but yeah, so I think I, I do think celebrities are super valuable. Celebrity endorsements are so powerful because I think they've developed a lot of goodwill in the community. Um, And if the brand makes sense for them and matches their vibe and matches the vibe of their audience, I think we just create abundance from there for everyone. I love it. My daughter would fully agree with you. She has been educating me in Olivia Rodrigo for the past two (laughs) weeks. So I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's a good fit. Nice, man. This was a, this was a lot of fun. I, I'm going to get a Mas Amigo and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, he's going to be, maybe I'll put him in the background. Maybe he, maybe he oh, needs yeah, to become part you. of the, uh, the DDC podcast background. Cause, uh, it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll need to figure out what hat suits him best, but, or, or what gender, I don't even know. Uh, you know, I don't even know. Yeah, I know that one's, yeah. People always like the number one question we get are, um, why is my Mas Amigo floating or why is it not floating? Like if yeah. you look at our Google SEO, like that's the number, the two number one searches is floating and not floating. And then the other one is, are they boys or girls or how do they make babies? It's hilarious. That sounds good, man. Nice. Well, why don't, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in it and we'll come yes. back, uh, chat a little bit more about your growth in a, in a few months. Thanks for yes. coming on today, Joe. This was fun, man. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. Thanks for having me. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can do that right now at direct all one word, dot co.
I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.